Sutra, accomplishing the pure mind, brings thorough understanding and great joy. Knowing that dharmas arise from conditions, he cultivates with diligent zeal. Impartially contemplating all dharmas, he comes to know their inherent nature. Not opposing the treasury of Buddha Dharma, he awakens universally to all dharmas, constantly fortifying his resolve with joy. He thereby purifies and adorns the Buddha's body, immovable as Mount Sumeru. He single-mindedly quests for right enlightenment. Commentary Accomplishing the Pure Mind How can this be done? By cultivating the six parameters and myriad practices of the Bodhisattva path. The six parameters are giving, morality, patience, vigor, dhyana, concentration, and wisdom. The myriad practices include all, include all dharma, i.e. methods of practice leading to enlightenment that benefit other sentient beings. By cultivating the six parameters and myriad of practices, you can perfect the purity of the mind, and that brings thorough understanding and great joy. When your mind clearly understands and fathoms everything, you feel great joy. This great happiness stems from thorough understanding, knowing that all dhammas arise from causes and conditions. One understands that they are empty. However, one should not be attached to emptiness. Rather, one should cultivate with diligent zeal. Zeal implies a lack of fear and trepidation. It also implies vigor and perseverance. One cannot be zealous one day and slack off the next. One must be diligent and jealous. Minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day, month after month, and year after year. Diligent is the opposite of lazy, and you should not be lazy with respect to what? Cultivation. Impartially contemplate the reality underlying all dharmas. He comes to know their inherent nature. Not opposing the treasury of Buddha Dharma, he awakens universally to all dharmas. The Bodhisattva perfects the drama of thoroughly understanding all dharmas, constantly fortifying his resolve with joy. So he is always happy and determined. He thereby purifies and adorns with the Buddha's path of Bodhi, immovable and steady as Mount Sumeru. He cultivates the Bodhisattva path and single-mindedly quests for the unsurpassed proper, equal, and right enlightenment. The Bodhisattva cultivates this unsurpassed drama in order to realize Buddhahood. Sutra, with vigorous resolve, he cultivates the path of samadhi. Through measureless earns of diligent practice, he never retreats or falters. The drama of the Bodhisattva enters is what is practiced by the Buddhas. Comprehending this principle, his mind never grows weary or lax. As the peerless one touch, he regards all dramas impartially, bearing everything equally with patience. He is able to achieve the wisdom of impartiality. Following what the Buddha's touch, he accomplishes the drama of patience, understanding the dramas in accord with thusness. He does not differentiate among them. Commentary with a courageous and vigorous resolve, he cultivates the path of samadhi, the path of proper concentration and proper reception. Through measureless ends of diligent practice up to the present moment, he never retreats or falters along the path to the unsurpassed, proper, equal, and right enlightenment. The drama the Bodhisattva enters is what is practiced by the Buddhas. The drama gateways entered by the Bodhisattva are precisely the Buddha's work. Comprehending this principle, this drama, his mind never grows weary or lax. He would never doze, doze off during a sutra lecture. The reason you would feel tired and doze off is that you don't realize the importance of seeking the drama. If you understood how important it is to seek the drama, 
you would not be affected by drowsiness or laziness. As the pillars one, the Buddha taught, you regard all dhammas impartially. The Buddha taught all sentient beings to view all dhammas as equal, bearing everything equally with patience. He is able to achieve wisdom of impartiality. The Buddha also taught us the patience of bearing everything equally. Once we can bear what we deem unbearable, we can attain the wisdom of impartiality. Following what the Buddha taught, following the principles of their teaching, he accomplishes the drama of patience. Understanding the dramas in accord with thirstness, there is but one thirstness, not two. When one is thirst, all are thirst. When all are thirst, nothing is not thirst. Thirstness implies that you are at ease with everything, and everything is just right. When one understands thirstness, nothing is artificial or forced. He differentiates not among them. Within the drama of thirstness, there are basically no distinctions. Sutra in the heaven of the thirty-three, all the celestial princes share a single vessel of food. Yet every prince's food tastes different. The various various foods that are eaten do not come from the ten directions. According to the karma of their consideration, this force. Naturally, appear in the vessel. A similar thing happens to bodhisattvas as they contemplate all dharmas, which arise from causes and conditions, yet do not come into being or cease to be. Commentary: In the heaven of the thirty-three, Chayasthimsha heaven, all the celestial princes share a single vessel of food. They eat from the same dish or plate, yet every prince's food tastes different. In what way is the food different? For those who like sweet food, the food tastes sweet. For those fond of sour food, the food tastes sour. For those who prefer bitter food, the food has a bitter taste. For those who like hot, spicy food, the food tastes hot and spicy. The food has whatever flavor the celestial being prefers. It is not like in the human world where we have to season our food. If we season it well, the food can be delicious. If we season it poorly, it doesn't taste so good. Celestial beings don't have to season their food; their food naturally suits their individual tastes. The various foods that are eaten do not come from the wounds of the ten directions. According to the karma of their consideration, these foods naturally appear in the vessel. As a reward. For the good karma they created, the celestial beings get to enjoy fine food. A similar thing happens to bodhisattvas as they contemplate all dharmas which arise from causes and conditions, yet do not come into being or cease to be. Since there is no coming into being, there is no ceasing to be. This teaching is very natural, not at all forced. Sutra: Since they do not cease to be, they have no end. Since they have no end, they are free of defilement. Thus, regarding to ever-changing worldly dramas, the Bodhisattva knows them to be beyond change. Without change, there is no location. Without a location, there is quiescence. With his mind undefined by attachments, he vows to liberate all sentient beings. Concentrating on the Buddha drama, he is never distracted or moved. With a heart of compassionate vows. He acts expediently in the world. Commentary: Since all dharmas are not produced, they do not perish. Since they do not cease to be, they have no end. If they are never destroyed, how could they have an end? Since they have no end, they are free of defilement. Thus, regarding the the ever-changing worldly dharmas that are subject to formation, dwelling, decay, and emptiness. The Bodhisattva knows them to be beyond change. The Bodhisattva understands that they are unreal. Being unreal, how could they change? Without change, there is no location. Without lo- a location, there is only quiescence. With his mind undefined by attachments, he vows to liberate all sentient beings. Within that quiescence, the Bodhisattva's mind is free from defilements and attachments. 
The Bodhisattva's only intention is to liberate sentient beings from suffering so they can attain happiness and to help them end birth and death. Concentrating on the Buddha drama, never is he distracted or moved. The Bodhisattva cherishes the Buddha drama. The Buddha drama is neither produced nor destroyed, neither defined nor pure, neither increasing nor decreasing. Thus, it neither scatters nor moves. With the hearts of greatly compassionate vows, he acts expediently in the world. With the hearts of great compassion, the Bodhisattva uses expedient means to teach and transform all sentient beings in the world so that they may live suffering and attain happiness. Sutra Diligent in his quest for the ten powers, he abides in the world but does not dwell, neither going nor coming. He expediently and skillfully espoused the drama. This patience is supreme, understanding that dramas are endless. He enters the true drama realm without actually answering anything. Commentary Why does the Bodhisattva cultivate the Bodhisattva path with such vigor? It is because he is diligent in his quest for the ten powers of the Buddhas. He abides in the world but does not dwell. He is both of this world and not of this world. At this level of his cultivation, the Bodhisattva attains the state of neither going nor coming. He expediently and skillfully spouts the Dharma. All the Dharma he speaks is expediently aimed at liberating sentient beings. This parameter of patience is supreme. Understanding that Dharmas are endless, he enters the true Dharma realm. The Bodhisattva understands that Dharmas are infinite and he certifies to the principle of the true Dharma realm without actually answering anything. In actuality, there is no certification and no entry. Sutra, the Bodhisattva dwelling in this patience, universally sees the all first come ones simultaneously bestowing a prediction upon him. This is called being offered a position by the Buddhas comprehending that dramas in the three periods of time are characterized by stillness and purity. He is able to transform sentient beings and set them in a wholesome path. Commentary The Bodhisattva dwelling in this patience, in the state of patience with the state of mind in which no mental objects arise, universally sees all first come ones, simultaneously bestowing a prediction upon him. All Buddhas throughout the ten directions bestow a prediction upon the Bodhisattva at the same time. This is called being offered a position by the Buddhas. This is a position in which one works for the Buddhas. Comprehending that dharmas in the three periods of time, past, present, and future, are characterized by stillness and purity. He is able to transform sentient beings in all places and at all times and set them in a wholesome path, he enables them to dwell in a good path. Sutra All the various dharmas in the world are nothing more than illusions. Once the Bodhisattva can understand them thus, his mind will not be swayed. All karma is born from the mind, but since the mind is said to be like an illusion, if one leaves these discriminations, all paths of existence will be extinguished. The mind is like a magician who conjures up every image, causing the crowd to crave them with delight. Ultimately, there is nothing there. Commentary All the various dramas in the world are nothing more than illusions. All worldly dramas are illusory. Once the Bodhisattva can understand them thus, his mind will not be swayed. The Bodhisattva's inherent nature will be unshakable. All karma is born from the mind, but since the mind is said to be like an illusion, since the human mind is illusory, if one leaves these false discriminations, all paths of existence will be extinguished. The six paths of rebirth, the three realms, and the twenty-five planes of existence will be evident for what they are. The mind is like a magician who conjures up every kind of unreal image. He creates these images, causing the crowd to crave them, crave them with delight. 
The magician merely stimulates everyone's greed for size. Ultimately, there is nothing there. Those days are illusory and unreal. Their existence cannot be substan、uh, substantiated. Sutra: The world is also thus. All things are illusions. Without a nature or an origin, in spite of their manifold appearances, the Bodhisattva liberates sentient beings, leading them to realize that dramas are illusory. Beings are no different from illusions. Once illusion is understood, there are no beings. Sentient beings can trace and own dramas in the three periods of time, are without exception no more than illusions. The mind conjures up illusory men and women, elephants, horses, oxen, sheep, cottages, pools, springs, and such, groves, flowers, fruits, and the like. These illusory things have no sentience, nor any place where they dwell. Characterized by ultimate creations, they manifest in response to discriminations. The Bodhisattva in this way contemplates all in the world. All dharmas conditioned and unconditioned, he understands to be illusory. Sentient beings and lands are created by various kinds of karma, answering the illusion-like realm. The Bodhisattva relies on and attaches attaches to nothing. Commentary: Just as a magician conjures up illusory images, the world is also thus. All things are illusions. All worldly phenomena are unreal, as if conjured up by a magician. They are without a nature or an origin, in spite of their manifold appearances, lacking an independent or intrinsic nature of their own. All worldly dramas are not subject to production and destruction. Nevertheless, they manifest in myriad forms, through the use of various expedient means. The Bodhisattva liberates sentient beings, leading them to realize that dramas are illusory. Beings are no different from illusions. Sentient beings are themselves illusory transformations. Once illusion is understood, there are no beings. Once you understand that all is illusory and unreal, how can you still be attached to the notion of sentient beings? All sentient beings, countries of Buddhas, and all dramas in the three periods of time. Including the drama spoken by Buddhas of the past, present, and future, are without exception no more than illusions. They have no essential nature of their own. Like a magician, the mind conjures up illusory men and women, elephants, horses, oxen, oxen, sheep, cottages, houses, pools, springs, and such, groves, gardens, flowers, fruits, and the like. These illusory things have no sentience, nor any place where they dwell, since they are mere illusions. These unreal phenomena are characterized by ultimate creations. They manifest in response to discriminations, according to the time, place, and circumstances. These distinct forms manifest. The Bodhisattva in this way manifests these distinct states and contemplates all in the world. He manifests a myriad of transformation bodies in all worlds, all dharmas, conditioned or unconditioned. He understands to be illusory and unreal. Sentient beings and lands are created by various kinds of karma. The entire material world, with its mountains, rivers, lands, buildings, sentient beings, and countries, is a manifestation of karma. Some countries prosper. While others are in decline, some nations fail, while others have virtuous and kind citizens. All of these phenomena are results of delusion and karma. They are retributions brought on by the strength of karma, entering the illusion-like dream of the samadhi of perceiving or as illusions. The bodhisattva relies on and attaches to nothing, since everything is illusory. The Bodhisattva relies upon nothing and clings to nothing. Sutra: Attaining skillful means in this way, the Bodhisattva is tranquil and free from sophistry, dwelling on the ground of non-obstruction. He universally displays magnificent mind. 
courageous disciples of the Buddha comply with and enter the wonderful drama, deftly observe how every thought traps and entangles one in the world. The myriad thoughts resemble marriages, causing beings to be confused. The Bodhisattva recognizes the true nature of thoughts and leaves all confusion far behind. Commentary: Attaining skillful means in this way through non-attachment. The Bodhisattva is tranquil, unmoved, and free from sophistry, dwelling on the ground of perfectly filled non-obstruction. He universally displays the Bodhisattva's magnificent spiritual might. Courageous disciples of the Buddha comply with and enter the samadhi of perceiving all as illusions and certify through all the wonderful drama, deftly observe how every discursive thought traps and entangles one in the world like a net, so one cannot get free. The myriad discursive thoughts resemble marriages, appearing to exist from afar, but disappearing when one draws near, causing beings to be confused. Such thoughts create confused interpretations and deluded ideas in sentient beings. The Bodhisattva recognizes the true nature of thoughts and leaves all confusion far behind, recognizing discursive thoughts for what they are. The Bodhisattva does not entertain them. He stops giving rise to confusion and attachments. Sutra: Sentient beings are each distinct. Their forms and kinds are not the same. Realize that everything comes from thought. There is no reality to anything. Commentary: Sentient beings are each distinct. Their forms and kinds are not the same. There are different species of sentient beings, and within the same species, each individual is unique. In the human race, for instance, there are people of different skin color: yellow, white, black, and red, corresponding to distinct ethnic groups. Actually, each member of the human race has a unique appearance. Even identical twins are not exactly the same. Each person's features are distinct. Moving to the animal realm, horses, oxen, sheep, chicken, dogs, and pigs all differ from one another, and within each kind of animal, there are also differences. Horses come in a number of varieties, as do cattle, pigs, etc. Indeed, within every species of sentient being, there are different types and forms. Realize that everything comes from thought. Why are there different kinds of sentient beings? It's because sentient beings have different thoughts. Thoughts can be compared to specks of dust in the air. In the sunlight, you can see the individual dust moles dancing up and down, drifting, drifting north, south, east, or west. Each dust mold travels its own path. Our thoughts are the same way. Some people's thoughts drift south; others' thoughts tend northward. Still others have thoughts leading east or west, up or down. Magnanimous, magnanimous, hearted people tend to ascend. Petty-minded folk head downwards. Think it over. Don't our thoughts drift and wander like most of those that bobbing in the air? One who thinks of getting rich all the time is infatuated with money. Some are intoxicated with the idea. Of political power, others fantasize, fantasize about making a fortune in the business world. Even scholars are confused by their books and turn into pedants or bookworms that bore millions of holes in books. Farmers are preoccupied with making a fortune from their crops. They think of planting peanuts and monopolizing the peanut maker. The peanut market, or planting cotton and becoming the cotton king, all those are cases of delusion leading to attachment. If people don't break such attachments, they will never understand things as they really are and will remain muddled till they die. How pitiful! Thoughts are as countless as most of dust, and since people's thoughts are different, their appearances also different. They can. The content of their thoughts in past lives determines their present futures. 
if you wished to look like a ghost in your previous life, in this life you look like a ghost. If you preferred to look like a human in this life, you have a human form. If in the past life you thought being a pig isn't bad, in this life you become a pig. Perhaps you wanted to be a dog in America, thinking the dogs in America have a better life than some people. These dogs get hugged and petted by their owners, who love them more than anything. If you envy the life of an American dog, you might just become one. But it might turn out that your owner gets tired of you and doesn't love you that much. You never know. Our deluded thoughts have accumulated over millions of eons. We are not talking about the thoughts of one lifetime. We have been immersed in deluded thoughts life after life over infinite eons. You should realize that after engaging in such thoughts over a long period of time, you will fall. The Sura Gama Sutra very clearly describes the four kinds of birth from worms as moisture and transformation. The womb born uh, come from emotion. They are born. They are born from the love between men and women. Love produces love, which gives rise to more love in life after life without end. This cycle of love and uh, procre uh, procreation continues uninterrupted. The egg born come from thought. When a mother hen lays on her eggs, he thinks. She thinks my chicks are just about to hatch; they are coming out soon. She thinks that day after day, and as the result, her chicks indeed hatch. The moisture born comes from combination; that is, what is moist combines with what is dry to produce such type of birth. The transformation born comes from separation; these being separate from their original substance; that is. They evolve or transform into something different. For example, some insects transform into birds, and birds also can change into insects. One species transforms into another. When you understand that everything comes from thought, then you realize that there is no reality to anything in this world. People contend for fame and profit, and pursue wealth, sex, fame, food, and sleep, but none of that is real. Such individuals are born muddled and die in a state of confusion, without understanding anything in between. No matter how smart you are, you are not free to determine your own birth and death. Why do people cultivate the path? They want to liberate themselves from birth and death. Thus, they must understand that there is no reality to the discursive thoughts that generate all worldly phenomena.